Hey, it's Rainad back with another deck tech. This time, I'm going to cover Hunter. So, uh, Hunter's a deck that's been around, at least in a aggressive shell like this, since not pretty much forever in Hearthstone, but it, ha it didn't really pick up in popularity until they changed Unleash the Hounds to the completely overpowered card that it is right now. It just synergizes so well with all the other, all the other Hunter cards, wins you games, you have no business winning, just, you know, ridiculously overpowered card. Uh, unfortunately, the other 28 cards in the deck are not nearly as good, but... It's still a pretty solid strategy despite that, and it's a deck that I play on ladder a lot, like pretty often actually, uh, depending on what I'm playing against. Not all aggro decks are created equal, like in terms of what their good and bad matchups are. Druid does decently well against most aggro decks, for example, but um, something like Aggro Warrior is going to have a relatively easy time against that in a lot of games, whereas Hunter is going to have a much harder time. And uh, if you see a lot of Handlock, Rogue, and Shaman, or keep those decks in mind, Handlock, Rogue, and Shaman, uh, if you're getting paired against a lot of those decks several matches in a row, that's the time you should be switching to Hunter because those are phenomenal matchups for this deck. They don't have very much life gain. Uh, the Handlock deck burns itself low on its own, and you can kind of ignore their giant taunt creatures. Just, like, all three of those, very good matchups. Anyway, I'm going to go through the uh, deck card by card, kind of explain why I have it built the way that I do, because um, this list is uh, reasonably different from most other lists. There's, there's a couple of key changes. Most people, uh, their 100 decks differ by between 6 and 10 cards, so there's actually a pretty uh, huge variety in 100 decks. Um, and I will do a another video on kind of gameplay where I'm going to play a game and kind of explain some decisions. Um, yeah, 100 has a deck, it has this reputation where it's a deck that's really face roll and easy to play and just go for the face a lot, and that's a, that's a great way to play Hunter if you don't intend to win, but um, the deck is actually very complicated and uh, I categorize it more in like a, the combo deck role, kind of like Miracle Rogue, uh, more than aggro. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so Hunter's Mark. A lot of people play two Iron Beak Owl as a way to get through big taunt creatures, because um, you do need to deal a good amount of damage with your actual creatures to kill them. Uh, but I found Hunter's Mark just a lot better. You could use it to kill giants and stuff to keep yourself alive instead of just silencing. Uh, it's a lot cheaper, so you can actually play it the turn that you go off with Starving Buzzard and Unleash the Hounds uh, after drawing a million cards. And uh, just synergizes really well with traps, and just a really powerful card. Um, so I definitely think two Hunter's Mark's correct. I'd probably play four of this card if I could. Um, two Arcane Shots, it's kind of a flexible slot. Um, I wanted some more cards that could just go to the face on the turn where I kill them towards the end. Uh, ignoring Taunt Creatures, you can also use it with Hunter's Mark to kill any big creature that you need to. And it's uh, good at slowing your opponent down early. Sometimes that's the correct play. You can also use it to set up Explosive Traps uh, by, like, for example, Arcane Shotting like a Frothing Berserker and then playing an Explosive Traps so they can't attack into that. It's, a little, it's just a very flexible card, reasonable, so I'm running it for now. Uh, two Flare, uh, okay, so this is a card a lot of people disagree with. It, it's Sure, it's fantastic in the Hunter Mirror and all of that, but I don't play it because it destroys secrets. I play it because it's like the only one mana card in the game that draws a card that you can play besides tracking. And what that does is effectively reduces my deck down to 28 cards instead of 30, so it increases the odds of me drawing the cards that I need to win the game, like Unleash the Hounds. Uh, tracking is a card that <clears throat> a lot of people don't really understand why it's good. They, you know, you you discard the other two cards and you'll never get them, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter because the Hunter deck is two Unleash the Hounds and 28 shitty cards. So discarding anything that's not Unleash the Hound is perfectly acceptable and you just gotta learn to live with it. Like, tracking basically draws you whatever half of the combo that you're missing. And this is a card that, uh, given the option between playing tracking and another one drop, like Flare for example, you should always play the other one drop. The longer you hold on to tracking, uh, the more information, like the more draws into your deck you'll be, and the more information you'll have about which half of the combo you're missing. Like, if you play a tracking early game and you see a Starving Buzzard and an Unleash the Hounds, you don't know which one to take because you want both of those cards to combo off together. But had you waited a few turns to just naturally draw the Buzzard, then you would know that you need Unleash the Hounds. So you should always hold on to this effect. Uh, well, not not like you shouldn't always hold on to it, but you should hold on to it if you have other one drops to play. A lot of times I will just run it out to save on mana if I do know specifically what I'm looking for. Leopardome is a card that I'm playing. Uh, it's another one like Arcane Shot. I'm not 100% sold on yet, but uh, it, it's pretty solid. Like it deals two damage to the face for one mana, which is effective. It's very cheap. Like I don't like that it commits a creature to my side of the board if I have a misdirection. Um, so sometimes, like if I have a Leopardome out, I won't play misdirection because I don't want them to attack me and then misdirect in my own creature. It's kind of a waste of that trap. Um, but it is, it does give you like a proactive early game play, and it's one of those cards that I would never put back in my opening hand uh, should I see it. 
Timberwolf is there uh, to you know go off with the Leash of the Hound. It's a very cheap effect. It basically translates into a one mana card that deals six, eight, ten damage, depending on just how many dogs you end up getting. And uh, it's just a very powerful effect. It gives you some. This is one of those cards that, along with the Leash of the Hounds, wins you games you have no business winning. If your opponent tries to slow play you, like rather than dumping a bunch of creatures on the table, the hero power a lot, heal, take the game nice and slow. Playing Timberwolves in your deck it gives you the option to play Leroy at a later stage of the game once you eventually draw him, you know, with your trackings and flares and stuff. Uh, give them two whelps and then unleash the hounds and you, you know, now that they have whelps you get more dogs and you play Timberwolf and even though they tried to play around, unleash the best that they could have, Timberwolf gives you enough damage to actually, like, kill them uh, on that later turn. So, uh, I've been reasonably happy with this guy, even though he does seem like a dead card uh, pretty often in the early stages of the game. So one of the key differences between my hunter deck and most other lists is other lists play either three or four traps. They play, like they all play two explosive, and they play either one or two misdirection. Uh, I'm a fan of the full six traps. I actually think freezing trap is better than misdirection, but um, the reason that I play them is because what they do is they slow the game down in in every matchup, not just against aggro. Uh, and hunters like how do I put this? Like, with Zoo, the longer the game goes on, uh, the lower your chance of, is of winning, actually. But with Hunter, it's kind of the inverse of that. Because of your hero power, the longer the game goes, uh, the more likely the Hunter deck is to win, because eventually you're going to draw the pieces that you need to just kill them, and the whole game, your hero power is whittling them down. The Hunter hero power scales extremely well. Like, when you use it on turn 2, and you bring them from 30 to 28, you're not really reducing their life total by that much, or reducing it by 1 15th. But when they're at 10 life and you're hero powering, like, that's 20% of their life total. That's like, you know, it's one of those hero powers that scales well as the game goes on. So, uh, you basically, like, dragging the game out with your traps, which all slow the game down, is definitely a good strategy. And it also makes Eagle Horn Bow much, much better. This is, like, one of the best cards in the deck when you play six traps. So, yeah, Freezing Trap, uh, you should keep in mind that this triggers, even if they attack your creature, not just your face. So, yeah, sometimes you can, hmm, I gotta put this. Sometimes you can, like, go off with Starving Buzzard for just a couple of cards, and uh, even though you have this Starving Buzzard sitting out in play that they can kill with, their, with uh, you know, the creature that they have, you don't always have to worry about it because Freezing Trap can protect your creature. That doesn't come up often, but it's mostly just a, like, for those games where they try to play around your Unleash the Hounds, they end up playing into Freezing Trap because the way you play around Unleash the Hounds is you commit only one or two very large creatures to the board, and then have those large creatures kill your opponent, rather than flooding the board with lots of little guys and then getting unleashed out of the game. So when people play, you know, like a Baron Geddon or something as their first creature, and you freezing trap it, like, that's gonna work out very well for you. And it's just a huge tempo swing. Misdirection actually deals damage to them, like Explosive Trap, if it misdirects into their face. Uh, it's, it's good enough at what it does. I don't like it as much as Freezing Trap or Explosive Trap, but it is very, uh, solid. It as long as you can get two damage out of it or, you know, run two creatures in each other, it's usually reasonable. Explosive Trap is kind of necessary against hyper-aggressive decks, just a very powerful card. And uh, even against controlling decks, uh, in a worst-case scenario, since it deals two damage to their face, uh, you're paying two mana for two damage, which is, you know, it's a less efficient arcane shot, but it's not completely useless ever. All, like, all of these traps are, are good at some stage of the game. In order to kill you, your opponent's going to have to go through all of them. Uh, okay, so Unleash the Hounds, uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's an arcane explosion that draws you four cards and deals eight damage to them, it's not particularly balanced, and that's why we're playing the, the class. Iron B. Cows here is a fourth, or basically a third Hunter's Mark, it's not as good, but, um, you need, I kind of wanted another way to get through big taunt creatures, another one of those slots that's flexible in the deck, but I've been pretty happy with Hal. It draws a card off Buzzard, it's, it's pretty much the only beast synergy aside from Kill Command, um, but yeah, yeah, just a third Hunter's Mark, basically, it's slightly worse. Starving Buzzard's half of your main combo, which is Buzzard plus Unleash. Uh, a lot of times it's hard to decide, should you go off turn 4 and just draw 2 cards? Uh, should you do it later in the game and hope to draw more cards? It really depends on your hand, the matchup, a whole lot of factors. and uh, Hopefully that'll be better explained in the gameplay video that I'm going to have up in this same playlist uh, the second I publish this video. So make sure you guys check that out if uh, you're interested in kind of understanding how to play the deck. Because it's not just face, face, face. That's a great way to lose. Uh, so yeah, Eagle Horn Bow, another one of the cards I'll always keep in my opening hand. Very, very powerful. It'll get you minimum 6 damage for 3 mana, which is phenomenal. That's like better than Kill Command. It also helps you control the board early, and uh, with all the traps that we play, most players will play into it. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of people will just not attack if you have an Eagle Horn Bow and traps out, because they don't want to start taking 3 a turn, um, which, is, which is a strategy that works sometimes, but uh, even then, like... 
And just the threat of Eaglehorn bowing is kind of slowing them down. So yeah, it's just a phenomenal card. Definitely belongs in the deck as a two of. Animal Companion's another flexible card. I kind of wanted another three drop for the curve that I could play proactively. Like uh, these traps and stuff don't really accomplish much if uh, your opponent's not doing anything. Like if they're not playing creatures, you want to have something in your hand that can punish them for not doing anything. That's what Animal Companion does. You know, you can play them on an empty board and no matter which uh, beast you get off of it, it should be pretty decent value. Like. Uh, it does draw cards with Buzzard, which I'll sometimes do turn 5, although rarely. Um, it's just very good against the Hunter Mirror, especially. Um, but yeah, it's just like a proactive play, and I've been liking it more than Wolf Rider or Arcane Golem, because unlike Arcane Golem, you can safely play it on turn 3, and uh, Wolf Rider is a little bit better off the top, but I felt like uh, Animal Companion is just much better early game. Because of because of Unleash the Hounds, even getting Leoc, which is generally the worst beast, is pretty good. Kill Command, it's just a really efficient burn spell, doesn't care about taunt, kills your handlock opponents, just lets you, uh, on turn 7 or 8, lets you, like, double kill command them, end the game real quick. Just really effective card. I usually try to hold on to Kill Command, uh, and not use it on creatures, you know, given the option. And Leroy, of course, this is the card that a lot of people are going to ask, what can I replace Leroy with? I don't own Leroy. What should I cut for this guy? Or, what, what should I cut this guy for? Well, Leroy's kind of a unique effect because he gives your opponent whelps, and on top of that, he's just a fireball, which is fantastic for your deck that's trying to deal, you know, 40 points of direct damage or whatever. Um, so, he's not very replaceable. I would recommend doing your best to get Leroy if you intend to play Hunter a lot in the future. But if you absolutely want to play this deck and you don't have him, uh, I recommend probably one Arcane Golem as sort of a replacement. Uh, it doesn't fill the same role, but, you know, it's just another burn spell that's passable, so... Uh, but yeah, those are the cards. Make sure you guys check out the gameplay video that I post right after this video. And uh, yeah, see you next time with another deck tech.